Welcome everyone to this episode or this month's uh, Spiritual Questions Answered. And the topic for this month for today is how celestial bodies and alignments affect us. All right, or the alignments of celestial bodies. So um, let me explain what do I mean by celestial bodies. Basically, celestial means from the sky. Yeah, celestial means from the sky. Okay, or from the heavens. Now, uh, but I apply it in a in a more grounded kind of sense. So it's uh, from the sky and celestial bodies. By celestial bodies, what I mean is or are essentially the planets. Uh, oops, planets. The planets, our sun, and the moon. Alright, uh, mostly I'm referring to this and for some people, yeah, maybe the stars, alright. So, these are all uh, celestial bodies. There are uh, bodies up there in the sky, okay, or for some they are treat as heaven, right, celestial. So, we are actually referring to the sky and the celestial bodies. And I'm talking about how these bodies, celestial bodies, and their alignments affect us. Okay, so um, this will be a little bit into astrology. And if you have any questions, feel free to type into the chat, chat box and I will take a look at your questions and I will address them after I share with you uh, what I have to share with you all right here. So, um, this is a topic that is um, maybe kind of like some people will believe, but some people will not believe. So, those of you who are in our Cordycat groups, you notice that every now and then I will, uh, I will post some announcements. I will be telling people that there will be certain celestial alignments, all right, to look out for, and these celestial alignments typically will cause uh, will affect people all right it will affect people and there will be positive effects negative effects and i'm normally referring to the celestial bodies alignment of celestial bodies and there are enough people right in the groups who are sensitive enough or they can feel that they're being affected by the celestial bodies and i'm here to explain how and why it is so Okay, so the first thing uh, we want to talk about after this understanding what celestial bodies are is we want to talk about our celestial alignments. Now, um, so just a little background about myself. So um, I'm Cat of Cody Cat. Yeah, we do mostly about energy stuff, energy healing, spiritual healing, and uh, crystals. A lot of things that do, to do with energy, we are all into it. And I'm also a little bit into astrology and specifically uh, what I studied was uh, Vedic astrology. Now, just to clarify, I am not a full-time astrologer. I'm not even a part-time astrologer, but I am a uh, hobby kind of astrologer. I studied and I studied it to observe so that I can read the charts and everything. And I find that um, as someone who's trained to sense energies, I find it very interesting that uh, alignments of celestial bodies can actually affect people to the point where like it can be felt all right at least for myself and a lot of people uh, who are energy sensitive they can feel it um they are but in astrology there are a lot more things going on okay so i'm not really diving into astrology but i'll be diving into the basics and helping everyone understand about why is it that some of you right are affected by celestial bodies alignment now the first thing um uh, alignments is typically all right i will the ones that concern us the most are usually straight lines all right straight line straight line uh, uh, alignments or some people will call them uh, when they're bunched up together conjunctions very near each other 
they have small technical term like a pulse. A pulse means a, a very close to each other. Now, let me give an example. Okay, the first example of celestial alignment that many of you may not be aware of is this too. All right, how many of you are aware that? Full moon and new moon are celestial alignments. There is some kind of alignment going on. Now, most people only know full moon is when they see the moon is full. They only know a new moon or dark moon is when they don't see the dark moon. But what exactly is happening? Alright, so I'll use this to illustrate what is a celestial alignment. Oh, Right now, what's happening with a full moon? In full moon, okay, a uh, blue here represent Earth. All right, blue here represent Earth, and you have the sun. Wow, uh, so sun is quite far away, and uh, you look kind of big. So as for sun, all right, and um, something. Nearby here will be the moon. And let's see. So what I would like to draw is now the, the sun is shining, the sun is shining, right? And the light is coming. So I'll just draw a line like this. Uh, roughly, uh, sorry, my line is not very straight. Okay, roughly, something like this. Roughly, okay, uh, this pattern is uh, not very good. So, uh, something like this. Now, um, that means this part here is where the sun's rays don't reach, right? This part here. Now, if the, so the moon, let's say the, the moon is uh, over here. All right. So the moon, we all know the moon orbits the earth here. Yeah? So the moon orbits the earth. Right, so when the moon is on this side, when the moon is on this side, and it happens to not be in the shadow of the earth, it happens not to be in the shadow of the earth, what's going to happen is the sun's rays is going to hit the moon and it's going to all reflect and of course over here, right, this is the earth, this side, it's all dark at night, yeah, and this is the moon. Right, so the side facing the sun is where it's, it's daytime, right? So you reflect. So on the night side of Earth, they will see the full moon when the moon is like this over here. And if the moon is, you know, if the moon is somewhere else, you will only see part of it, right? So if you imagine if the moon is over here, if the moon is over here, right, part of it is dark, so they can only see part of the moon, right? So that's why um, you don't see the full moon when the moon is traveling around. So over here, Alright, it's what you get is the full moon. Alright? Now, so this is a more or less a celestial alignment and in this alignment, generally, okay, sorry, my, my drawing is not very good. My drawing is like the moon is a little bit out. So, right for me, <coughs> it, it's supposed to be more or less in a straight line. In a full moon setting, the sun, earth and the moon is more or less in a straight line. Now, if the if it's exactly straight line, exactly straight, right? Then let's say the moon is right here in the middle, so so straight, then the moon cannot be seen because the moon will be in the shadow of the earth, and that's when you have a lunar eclipse. Alright, so full moon can be upgraded to a lunar eclipse. Right? Because the moon can no longer be seen if the moon is exactly in the shadow. Uh, the other 
when the move move when the moon move to the other side, all right. So when the moon move to the other side over here, right. So the night side of the moon will be facing up, and we can't see the moon. Yes, we can't see the moon. So it is new moon. And it so happened, so happened, uh, typically the distance is like, let's say uh, the moon is actually supposed to be like this big, okay, let's say roughly, and then the moon can block out just nice, if the moon is in just nice position, whereby it can block out this thing, or actually, it's not that big, okay. So what happens is, so the moon is actually small, right? So if the path of the moon is exactly just nice, then the moon will cast a shadow, right? It will cast a shadow onto the daytime on some place on Earth. And that some place on Earth where the moon shadow falls, they will not be able to see the sun. Alright, so new moon, if it's exactly very accurate straight line, what you get is a solar eclipse. So, um, full moons and new moons are essentially the celestial alignments that we experience on a monthly basis, right? Every month, right? Almost every month, we have one full moon, one new moon. Sometimes uh, more than one. All right, but usually, right? Every month we have one full moon and one new moon, and it's an alignment whereby the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun are in one straight line, more or less one straight line. If it's exactly, exactly in a straight line, so exact, then you, what you get is a lunar eclipse or a solar eclipse. Now, many people around the world, they notice this, right? When it is new moon or full moon, some people get cranky, they get moody. Some people even have headaches and pains. Is there anyone here attending this uh, talk right now live? that experience this, during new moon or full moon, you become more emotional or you get headaches, right? This is not uncommon. Now what is happening? So this is an example of celestial bodies and their alignments affecting us, okay? So what exactly is happening? So I will use, uh, I would like to use uh, signs to explain roughly what is happening okay now this is a standard celestial alignment we experience every month new moon full moon and when it's really very strong or exactly straight line then you have luna and solar eclipse now when we take a look at this again we look at this uh, sun earth moon these are uh, uh, this sun earth moon thing is a very important alignment uh, someone is sharing, Aiju is sharing, I can't sleep easily during full moon, especially when it's bright and close to Earth. Alright, good. So there will be other people who, are, who notice, right? Full moon, new moons can't sleep, they get um, emotional or headaches, these are very common. And we'll address with uh, the other planets and everything later. But first of all, we talk about these three, Sun, Earth and Moon. Now the other thing that is a known phenomenon is the tidal phenomenon, alright, tides. Tides. Everyone know tides? Does everyone here know that tides are actually primarily caused by the moon? Moon is the biggest factor. Alright? Tides, uh, the thing that causes tides, that affects tides the most, is the moon. So, typically what you have, alright, so, so you have the moon orbiting the earth, alright? So you have the moon orbiting the earth, so the moon is orbiting, right? Generally, you look from the top, it's a anti-clockwise orbit. And you will have ocean, all right? We have the ocean, the waters in the ocean. Now, the, the moon will attract the water, all right? So typically, uh, this is a bit hard to draw, so I'm going to draw it this way. So let's say this is the Earth, all right? And uh, you have the moon. And the moon is uh, orbiting this way. Now what's going to happen is the moon, due to the pull of the moon, it's kind of like gravity pull, but um, the equation is different and it's called a tidal pull. 
So what's going to happen is the the moon, due to its effects, is going to cause all the water now. It's exaggerated. The, the waters are all going to, to be pulled towards the moon. All right. And because Earth is spinning, Earth is spinning. All right. So the other side will also, the other side will also have a pull. So the, this is grossly exaggerated. Okay. So basically, the, the, the tides of the sea, all right, the bulge, bulge in the ocean, bo ocean body's water, all right, it will follow the moon. It's kind of like uh, there's a delay because the moon is kind of going, so it will kind of follow, follow. The moon is on orbit, and then this thing is going to rotate. Okay, this is the tidal thing. Okay, it's a gravitational pull. You can see it's something like gravitational pull. So the, the moon is attracting the water kind of there's a pull this way. Okay. Now, in terms of tides, in terms of tides based on celestial bodies, the most important one, the force is uh, the moon. This is the strongest. Number one is the moon. All right, number one is the moon. Number two factor is the sun. So if moon, moon power is about one, sun is about 0.4. All right, and the third one is uh, Venus, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, Venus is about 0.123 something 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 so now and normally there'll be super tight super tight would be like this uh, when it's a new moon when the new moon that means moon plus sun so the just nice right that means moon plus another 40 percent of cooling power then the tide will be stronger so that's why the tides are not always the same height and uh so we leave it to the guys at the ocean the ocean the fisherman and all the weather people they will calculate okay now this is what is happening in terms of the water body of the ocean of the seas and arguably okay arguably we humans are also made out of water and we are also being affected and pulled by the moon just that some of us don't know it okay now um the thing is what are the kind of effects that alignments can cause us? So I normally uh, will talk about the kind of effects. So firstly, we understand this, all right? So if so, if alignment, so this now it's just moon, and if there's a sun, there'll be alignment and the pull will be stronger, yeah? So it's, in general, like this is pull because it's like kind of like gravity. Now, what are the kind of effects that they normally have? So um, normally I talk about a lot of people will be more emotional, right? They'll be easily triggered. Easily triggered. Um, some people will have high energy. And high energy to the point, for example, uh, sleep is affected. They can't sleep, like Ajo mentioned. So sleep cycle is affected. Uh, those of you who have children, you might even notice. I have a young child, right? Um, young children during such celestial alignments, they have higher energy. They are more active than usual, and the children also they sleep less. Okay, and some people can be more driven. So when they have more high energy, right? They they will uh, they will work harder. Now, uh, what exactly is happening? So, um, firstly, there's this thing emotional and easily triggered. Okay, now why does this happen? So we need to take a look at the. Uh, uh, so this is a based on energetic understanding okay so if we take a look at humans now um we all have energies and emotions and emotions are a form of energies all right i hope everyone can understand emotions are a form of energies and we also have memories everything is energy okay the world all of us in energy 
uh, working in energy. All of these things are energy, and uh, many of us have uh, what we call what I call um, issues. What are issues? Issues are things that we have not resolved in our life and they continue to disturb us and it's usually the kind of things that we sweep under the carpet in our lives. We are not ready to deal with them. We keep on postponing. For example, uh, maybe um, you have a relationship issue, all right, but you don't want to talk about it. Because it's going to be very unpleasant or you have an issue with your family members all right certain family members always making you angry or with a friend who's always teasing you or every now and then but because he or she is a friend or family member and you don't want to bring it up or it could be certain unforgiveness certain things that we are unhappy with we don't quite forgive but we would like to but you know, never got around to sitting down with the other person and talk it out to resolve the issue. So a lot of us hold these issues within us and these issues, all right, these issues in general, they are negative energy. So negative, okay, minus is negative. So a lot of people hold these negative energies, negative issues, and we bottle it up within us, within our body. And they kind of like inside, all right? In different parts of our body, our energy, our chakras, our aura, all right? Maybe our, our mind, our heart, you know, all over the body. Now, what's going to happen during celestial alignments is you're going to get something like this, all right? An alignment, okay? Maybe like this, earth with moon and sun. Now, the alignment that normally I will refer to is I will take into account also the planets. All right, planets, the planets in our solar system. You guys know what planets are? Mercury, Venus, Mars, um, Earth is a planet, yeah? Uh, Jupiter, Saturn, uh, Pluto, all this. They are all, uh, Pluto is now considered a not, not real planet, dwarf planet, but within astrology, some people will consider it, okay? Now, all those are actually also uh, Earth is a planet that is revolving around the sun. So this is Earth. Earth is revolving around the sun. Now there are other planets that are revolving around the sun, but as far as we are concerned, as far as we humans or Earthlings are concerned, uh, from the night sky we see they are all revolving around, around the sky. All right, they're revolving around us. Now and they can get aligned. So can you imagine now? Let's say like this. Um. So uh, we are now 16 March and um, I did highlight uh, we have our next light on Earth meditation on 8th April. So on 8th April, a lot of planets are going to be bunched up and it's, um, it's going to be a solar eclipse, which is like new moon. We're going to get something like this, all right, Earth like this. And uh, we're going to get a lot of planets, a lot of planets. So um, there'll be planets and there'll be some planets, uh, maybe all bunched up around here, here or here. You know, celestial bodies, they're all going to be bunched up in the sky, roughly, lah, roughly. Now, typically, typically these planets, actually they're all different distance, okay, they're all different distance. Typically, with respect to Earth, they can be all around, all around. But on April 8th, or around that period, those of you uh, who've been monitoring this year, uh, this this year, roughly January, February, March, April, and May, the first five months, uh, is quite tough because the second week, typically the second week of the month, you have a lot of planets bunched up in the sky. All right? So all these planets is pooling. It's going to, can you imagine the tidal force? Now, not, now, in terms of mass, the actual tidal pool is going to be very little. Okay? But the effects, they are invisible forces that are not measured by science as long as they are all together they're all going to pull all right they're all going to pull the forces so the forces are going to pull 
pull um, in this direction, yeah? So this is like a pull, right? So imagine like this, we are here. Now, why people get emotional or easily triggered is because they have all these issues and so the moon is above and what's going to happen is the planets together, they are going to try and pull these issues out of the body, they're trying to pull it out. And so, um, a lot of people find that you will kind of think of things that you never normally think about or maybe suddenly because of this alignment, you decide to, you know, someone decided to talk to a girlfriend about relationship problem because, you know, uh, um, it aligned and it's something that's been bothering, right, him or her. So these kind of things happen and what's going to happen is when this energies neither these are negative energies of our issues now when it leaves us some people are going to experience the negative energies again and negative energies are not going to be pleasant and as it's leaving us it's actually leaving us it's unpleasant so people get emotional or they are easily triggered they're easily triggered because their issues are being stirred being pulled by the alignments to leave First. And this is why during celestial alignments, people get easily triggered and they get more emotional. It's because of this pulling effect of the celestial bodies being in alignment, being pulled. Now, we are, we are not used to this. Why does it happen? It's because we are not used to it. So normally, as humans, we have an aura or whatever. Now, most of the time, the planets are spread out, right? The planets are spread out around Earth. So the pool is not so much and we can handle it, but when everything is bunched up together, it's bunched up together and it's all pulling in one direction. So, so, so it's all pulling in one direction, more or less, you know, each, 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 each celestial body is contributing a pulling force, yeah? But on another day, on another day, on a good day, we don't experience it that way. On a, on a on a typical good day, right? When the planets are not bunched up, when the planets are not aligned, when the celestial bodies are not aligned, we will be experiencing forces. It's like you know, they're all pulling uh, rather evenly, or at least even if there's a little bit alignment, but the rest are not. They are not bunched up. You get what I mean? But now when we have all of them bunched up the combined forces, the effects are much stronger and we get easily triggered. This is what is happening, okay? But the next thing, uh, the, the next um, effect, which is uh, very standard, is the high energy effect. So why is it high energy? So one effect is the pooling effect. The next thing is the planets. All right, the celestial bodies, they are also sending, like the sun is sending light to us, sending energy. The moon, also some energy is being sent to us. All right, even, uh, even though we don't see it. Um, but the moon's effect is uh, it, uh, it's interesting. The, the scientists have actually um, measured something. When the sun hits it, there's something coming out from the moon. Especially in new moon, new moon is pretty strong for some things. Maybe the, the sun's rays will blast the moon's surface and some of the particles will come to us. So uh, they actually measured it, some ions or whatever. Now, whatever it is, there can be light or energies, okay, from all these celestial bodies coming the other way. So all these celestial bodies is going to bombard us. Now, um, uh, one of the key things like uh, if it's with the solar eclipse, it's going to be with the sun. Then, right, if, if they're all bunched up together with the sun, then you're going to notice that uh, you tend to get the energy keep going to your head, right? So the energy keep going to the head and a lot of people get headaches. But either way, when you receive too much energy, um, um, we will experience headache because there's too much in our, that we can't deal with, especially when it's coming from one direction. Now, typically, our uh, we have, all right, we have an aura. All right, we have an aura, a light aura. Some people see it as a light, 
And this aura will try to uh, protect us from energies, protect us such that external energies does not affect us so much. But when there's a lot of energies being over, overloading, all right, um, pressing down on our aura and everything, we can feel it and maybe you can get past uh, some of aura. A lot of people have auric, auric pose. All right, too much energy then it's going to come in, it's going to affect us. And basically the result is you end up having too much energy and then you cannot sleep. Like, um, I think now it's the 16th March. Last week, last week, around 8th March uh, for about a week, all right, I think uh, about 7, 8 March for about a week, the energies were quite high because of this bunching up. All right, so this bunching up, <coughs> especially uh, the moon, when the moon move across this. So, for example, the moon keeps revolving, the moon is quite fast, it was quite fast, the planet is quite slow. When the moon gets out, then it's kind of like, oh, you can breathe a sigh of relief. For example, the tidal force, the moon is the biggest factor. But once the moon comes into here, then basically what we're having is about one, when the moon moves across this, it adds together with all these forces and then it causes a problem for us. Alright, so then, that's why we have this high energy problem, and then we cannot sleep, and some people will be very driven. It's like, oh, um, for, I've heard this from quite a number of people whereby they normally uh, are not so diligent in maybe housework, household chores, they, or they, there are things that they have put off for a long time. And suddenly when they get a lot of energy, high energy and it's positive, oh, they go and do, do the stuff. Like maybe they have not, uh, you know, do, done spring cleaning for the home for a long time. So this, um, it, this high energy gives them the extra push that they need to go and do it or a certain project or uh, writing a book, painting, whatever. Okay, so this is how um, celestial bodies and alignments affect us. And um, um, I will, from this, I will go and explain a little bit more into astrology. But uh, does everyone understand this? This is the basics of why um, celestial bodies and the alignments affect us. Let me just take a look at the questions before I go into the astrology bit whereby we talk about the zodiac and the constellations. So Evan is asking who is less affected by celestial body alignments. Now, um, <clears throat> so the first, uh, it should be who is more affected. Now typically people who are energy sensitive, they are more affected by all these celestial body alignments. But having said that, because um, they feel it more. All right, they feel it more, they get headaches and then they can't sleep and uh, a lot of people, they will suddenly wake up in the middle of the night or they wake up very early. All right, they wake up early like uh, 5 or 6 a.m. Like maybe normally they wake up at 7 and they wake up at 5, you know, and then they can't fall back to sleep because it's, they have too much energy. So usually it is the energy sensitives who are more affected by these um, celestial alignments. But having said that, um, you will notice that a lot of people, normal people who are not energy sensitive, they are easily triggered during these alignments. During these periods of celestial alignments, they are easily triggered. And you just observe, like you observe your workplace, colleagues, there will be more arguments, there will be more disagreements. At home, two people will be, you know, easily, they, they blow their temper. It's because of all these the issues, the negative issues are being triggered and it's all being pulled up. Now, actually, being cold out thing is actually good. And um, normally what I tell people is if you meditate, if you do more qigong, right, uh, it will help you deal with it. You remain calm. You don't... Um, um, what is important is when these things are being cooled out of you, you do not <coughs> make the same mistake or make the same decisions. So what do I mean by that? Now, a lot of people, when the issues leave them, uh, they get triggered or they get memories of those issues. For example, um, just a simple one. Let's say um, an issue of uh, someone not paying you money. Or people owing you money and, 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 you, you know, and they never pay you back. Of course, you're very upset. And during this period, and then you get triggered, all right? And somehow, something um, you make you think of the person who owe you money. Now, when it gets triggered, all right, with your knowledge, with, you know, after attending this talk, the good thing is you need to try to tell yourself to let it go, to accept that the person is probably not going to pay you back. 
Now, if you get angry, that means you generate more negative emotions and more negative energies. Then this, there will be more issue or negative energies inside you and that, that will continue to be triggered in the future. So what we want to do is we want to, when it's being triggered to leave us, we just make a peaceful decision to just let it go and to accept. All right, that is the way to deal with these negative issues. And sensitive or not sensitive, you're going to uh, notice a lot of people are easily triggered because of their issues. Again, Edwin, Edwin is asking, is Pluto, Neptune, Uranus of lesser impact due to far away during alignment? Yes, in, in general, you can say that uh, they are far away, but they have a different type of um, uh, effect. So that's why Pluto, Neptune, and Uranus, the effects are actually more subtle. So they, they don't affect, for example, uh, in, in Vedic astrology, all right, uh, in Vedic astrology, we, the moon, the moon and the sun, right, are the ones that are considered the most powerful. And because uh, you talk about tidal, you know, tidal force pulling now, um, actually th there are two measures in science, all right? So one is a tidal force, all right? So you talk about tides or tidal force, right? Moon is number one. But you talk about gravity, all right? If you talk about gravity, right, then number one would be the sun, because sun is super huge, right? Then number two, then it's only the moon. Right, so it's inverse. <clears throat> so, whatever is sun and moon, the effects on us, these are measurable. Gravity and tidal force is measurable. We can, we, the scientists know about it. Now, even astrologically, sun and moon are, are considered to have the strongest effects on us, right, because they are force. And um, you will notice that all the planets that are further away, whatever the effect of us is more subtle. It's more subtle, but nevertheless, it still can affect us. Ijo is on, okay, Ijo is the one who said, I can't sleep easily during full moon. Irene, he say, uh, is it causing the waves in the sea also? So Irene must be talking about the, 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 the tidal thing. Yes, so the, the waves are caused by many things, okay, including the wind. All right, so there will be the sea breeze at night. Um, uh, so during the day, there'll be sea breeze and everything. Um, and uh, of course, this tidal motion, every time it, it's pulling and everything. Um, from what I know, it's part of the thing, but the, the waves are caused by more than that, all right? So they, there'll be the, the winds are blowing. For example, when the wind blows, it can cause the waves. Waves are actually caused by wind blowing across the surface. I really ask, are we going to have a replay? There's no replay for, you mean, you mean this talk, right? So basically don't worry. This talk is being recorded and will be uploaded to, to YouTube next month. All right, those who attend live, you get to ask questions live and then you get to attend it, you know, and um, um, you know, be the first to attend it. So everyone is clear about celestial bodies and alignments. Then I'll move on to a little bit on to astrology. Now to explain astrology, now, in astrology, so when it comes to astrology, so normal celestial alignment, sun, moon, and earth. So in astrology, there will be planets, and then there will be this thing called the zodiac, right? So just to explain. Now, uh, coming to astrology, we need to think a little bit uh, of what it was like for ancient men or last time. Nowadays, uh, we have light and everything, but in the ancient times, there's no light. People need to light fire and candles and all that. Or before the age of fire, there's nothing. And, uh, every, and there's no light pollution. And the skies, there's also no air pollution. And everybody at night can go up, look up to the sky and see a lot of stars. Now... <laughs> What they notice, what the humans know, know, notice were this. So we are on Earth, right? So uh, this is Earth. So let me draw it this way. This Earth, and uh, of course, this is the Sun. Uh, this Sun.
So this is the night side of Earth. Now, so all those people on the night side of Earth, they will see the night sky, they will see the stars, right? Uh, what they noticed was, because they have nothing better to do, they don't have TV and everything, so a lot of people are looking at the stars at night. And they notice that certain stars seem to move faster than other stars. Most of the other stars are fixed, but some stars, they move. And they call these stars, they give these stars a special name, which today, all right, we call them planets. So planets are actually, when we look up to the sky, they look exactly like stars, but they move with respect to other stars. So what actually is happening? Okay, so this is, uh, so Sun, Earth, um, okay, I'm going to shrink it even a little bit more. So this is Sun and Earth. So if I were to shrink it a little bit more or zoom out a little bit more. So if I were to zoom out a little bit more, this is Earth. So do not, all right, and this is the Sun. Uh, arguably, let's put another dot, okay? Now, so this side is night. So what they're going to see is, there will be some planets, so the planets I will mark as uh, black dots, but they're actually shining, all right? The planets are nearer, all right? They're, they're nearer, and some can be further away, all right? Now, what's happening is, now, Earth is orbiting the Sun. Yeah, we all know Earth is orbiting the Sun. Now, each of these planets, they are also orbiting the Sun. They are all moving in a anti-clockwise uh, orbit. Roughly. They are moving around the Sun now. But in the far, far distance, in the far, far distance, there are stars which are relative to the Sun. They are not moving very much. So for example, let's say you consider this, right? The, those that are nearer to the Sun, the, the angular, they will move more. This one will move very little. So actually the stars that are further apart, they're actually stationary while these so-called our planets are moving. But our planets look like stars and they call them wandering stars. And we start to notice that these planets, they are moving against a backdrop. So they're moving across a backdrop. So let's say there's a ring. So um, there is like a ring. So in the far distance, very far away from Earth, all right, in the far distance, we, we, what we notice is, for example, uh, so this is still the night sky. So maybe this part to this part here is, uh, there's a certain uh, shape of the stars and we call it, it looks like a ram and we call it uh, Aries. Yeah, we call it Aries. And then there'll be another sector of the sky, right? And uh, this one looks like a bull, all right? It looks like a bull somehow, and we call it Taurus, and so on and so forth. So what is happening is, okay, now our solar system is actually kind of flat. All the planets are kind of flat. It's like on a disk, and all the planets are rotating on a disk. Right? In case you don't know, all the planets are kind of rotating on the disk. And in the far distance, all right, the, so this, this plane whereby the planets are orbiting is called the ecliptic plane, more or less called the ecliptic plane, all right, or the, the plane of the solar system is known as the ecliptic plane. And in the far distance of the ecliptic plane, you have 12 constellations and the 12 constellations, right, we call them the zodiac. And you have 12 signs, so Aries, Taurus is just two of the signs, then you have you know, all kinds of signs, so they have 12 signs. Now, so what they notice is this, they notice that, hey, you know, um, maybe this is um, um, Jupiter, Ju Jupiter is in Aries, it's going to move to Taurus, or this one is in Taurus, it's going to move, move away and away, so everything is moving, and so we learn to plot a chart. So typically, um, 
typically in a chart, right? For Vedic astrology, we, we plot it kind of, we see the world in a different way, but anyway, we, we plot it out like this. So we only, in uh, Vedic astrology, Vedic astrology and uh, the Chinese astrology, Zivito, so you will see this, uh, this, this plot. This plot is supposed to represent the 12 zodiac signs, right? The, the 12 zodiac signs, so there will be 12 boxes. Right? So this is supposed to represent Aries, for example. This is supposed to represent Taurus. Normally, they don't say. And uh, without, uh, it's always known that over here in the center is Earth. All right? Uh, in actual life, everything, when we look from the top, everything is rotating anti-clockwise, but when uh, we thought, we are, we are, so this is looking from the top. For the Indians, they are actually looking from the bottom. So looking from the bottom, everything is going clockwise. So when they plot, everything is clockwise, so they will plot the planets, and uh, basically, they have a way to plot, and nowadays, uh, it's all very scientific, so you know. So they can place, and they will say, oh, so behind the backdrop, let's say, if they put here, all right, so if they put here, if they put it here, that means this is closer to this. If they put it here, it's in between, it's closer to Taurus. All right, and they put a degree. So in general, they split it into 30 degrees because 360 degrees, right? One circle is 360 degrees. You split by 12, right? You split by 12, 12 signs is 30 degrees for each box. So they normally put a number. So normally the software, they, they're, not, they're not going to draw it. They just put, uh, let's say, uh, they'll say this is Jupiter and they put a number so maybe they put 10, 10.01 so uh, 10 degrees and uh, 1 minute or whatever something like that so the 10.1 degrees so is to indicate their position and this is how um, astrology is used now astrology also affects us in a, a little bit more uh, different than celestial alignments so um, I will explain it here, yes, doesn't really have to do with celestial alignments. It has to do with uh, our energies of humans. So, now, um, before we were born, we were babies in our mother's womb. Yeah? Before we were born, we were babies in our mother's womb. Right? So, Alright, so mother, mommy is pregnant. And uh, there's baby inside. Now, the mother will have an aura and energy and is protecting the baby. Alright? When the baby is born, alright, the moment the baby is born, tiny baby, alright, the baby with aura and light. Now, everyone when they are born, what's, what's going to happen? So they are born on Earth. Now, all the energies of the planet, so all the energies of the planets, so all the energies of the planets, which is all around Earth, so they are on Earth, so why the planet all around Earth? There will be the energies and it will all imprint onto the child. Right, it will imprint onto the child when the child is born. So the imprint is kind of like a chalk, uh, a stamp of energy. But when the child is in the mother's womb is protected, Right, and for that, but my mom's energy, but when it comes out, it gets exposed to all these energies of the planets and everything. The planet is going to like stamp a mark of energy on the person. All right. So in astrology, right, we have this thing called the needle chart. Needle chart. So needle chart means. Needle chart means typically. You go to the astrologer, they'll take your date and time of birth for Vedic astrology, date and time of birth and the place where you're born. They're going to calculate uh, where the position of the planets and everything are, the celestial bodies are. And then they'll tell you, okay, what is your natal chart? When you were born, where were the celestial bodies in the different, in the zodiac, all right, in the different signs. And they can read or forecast into the future or tell the correct base on it because, um, each celestial body has its own energies and supposedly their interaction with the constellations, right? The constellations, the signs also can have an effect. 
and that is how astrology works. So, um, when they're born, so at the moment when we are born, we have this natal chart. So the we shall assume that the zodiac energies will affect us, and this one we carry up, we carry it throughout our lives with this. Now, the moment we're born is like this, but after we are born, the planets will keep on shifting, right? So the planet will keep on shifting, but let's say, so when you're born, Jupiter is here, but Jupiter is going to keep revolving around Earth. It's actually revolving around the Sun, okay? And um, because we have these energies in us, let's say a very simple alignment, okay? There's an alignment that most people don't see, which is not just the position of here, it's the position of whether these planets align with the planet, uh, the astrological chart, our natal chart imprint. The planets have already imprinted on us. So if let's say there is a, let's say our natal chart, is not, for some people's natal chart, they have a few different celestial bodies, whatever. Or let's say for this person. So this person, let's say like this. Let's say this person has, wow, you know, this is Earth. And this is one straight line. Huh? So this is one straight line. So, so if the person's natal chart is like this, so anytime there are planets, a lot of planets in Aries or this sign, all right, aligned and it affects their natal chart, they are more affected than usual. So the celestial alignment is not just the physical, physical alignment of the physical celestial bodies, it's also with your natal chart. That's why different people will have different effects. Okay? So this is how astrology affects and of course astrology is a very deep thing and um, I'm just a hobbyist. What I notice is celestial alignments, these straight line alignments, they are very easy to feel and ascertain. Whereas there are a lot of uh, astrological effects people study in astrology, I, I find that that may be a little bit, uh, for people who are very skeptical, they can argue their way around it. But for this one, celestial alignments is a little bit harder. All right. So with that, um, I hope I've managed to explain how celestial body and the alignments affect us, including the natal chart effect. All right. When we are born, we have this imprint, and there's already an alignment energy of the planets inside us. And when the, as the planets revolve, it can also align with our internal internal uh, this energy that's already have an imprint. So if you have any questions, uh, I'll be taking a look and help answer them. Jane said planets and stars are fundamentally different. Yes, they are fundamentally different. So the stars, the effects are even, uh, even actually much lesser. That's why anyone who studies astrology, you will notice that we are actually in astrology the main things that they're considering are only the main celestial bodies, which are planets, right? The planets, sun and moon. All right? So, the sun and moon. These are the main celestial bodies that we cover in astrology. The stars, they talk about the effects of the signs, all right? And usually it's because the signs, the energy from the stars, which are very far away, they can interact. And uh, they talk about, you know, uh, character of Aries, Horus, Leo, and so on. Adeline is saying, beneficial planets on or expecting 12th house can reduce sleep disturbance due to alignment of celestial bodies. So I don't even talk about uh, first house, second house, third house. As long as there's alignment, all right, you will feel it, it can affect you. It has nothing to do with the 12th house. But in astrology, they will talk about all that each house each house, it means each of the sign or each house, it can represent different things, okay? So, Stephanie, why does the imprint affect boy girl differently? Uh, and Jane is asking, how do you know that they do? Uh, that's the reason, because uh, Stephanie has twins, right? Uh, one is a boy and one is a girl. So that's how she knows, all right? Now, um, so that's a very good question. So, with twins, all right, with twins, the natal chart is more or less the same, all right, but in Vedic astrology, even one minute of difference is considered different because something changes, especially uh, with respect to the moon. The moon moves very fast, all right, so in Vedic astrology, they count that. Now, the, the other thing is, of course, the, the male versus female, it has effects. Now, you, for example, you have sun and moon. Um, sorry, sun and moon. 
right? So sun and moon, uh, but at least in Chinese philosophy, you know, we talk about yin and yang, all right? So sun and moon, the sun is more yang, moon is more yin. So, and sun and moon, if you talk about yin yang affecting male, female, and male is supposed to be yang, moon is supposed to be female. Uh, uh, similar concepts also, they don't use yin yang, but a similar concepts also exist in the uh, Vedic astrology. Like male and female are fundamentally different energies. And sun and moon will represent similarly. Uh, in Vedic astrology, for example, sun can represent the father, the moon can represent the mother. So sun is considered masculine energy and moon is feminine energy. So when you have twins that are male and female, right, sun and moon, they will have different effect on male and female. And Jane is saying maybe they are just different people. My question isn't answered. How do you know that girls and boys are affected differently as opposed to them being just different people? Oh, she's, uh, you know, it's just satirist paribus, right? All things being equal because they are twins, then uh, I guess that's how they know. If not, uh, you can get in touch with Stephanie or uh, Stephanie want to get in touch with Jane. All right. With that, uh, I hope I managed to answer everyone's questions. Oops, um, I forgot to mention one thing. So um, we are talking about the effects of the celestial bodies and their alignments. And um, let me round up this talk by talking about how can, what can we do to deal with the celestial bodies um, and their alignments and their effects on us. So in general, right, um, we can say that there are two, two main effects. Right, um, number one is it triggers us. Based on our uh, issues. Which are basically negative energies, all right? Negative energies. Number two, it gives us a lot of high energies, high energies, too much energies. So the first thing I mentioned earlier is uh, during the process, we need to learn to let go and we don't make the, the, the wrong decisions. All right, we need to learn to let go or accept situations that can't be changed. All right, a lot of these situations, they happened in the past. Now, now what are the kind of activities that we can do? Now, so first of all, the, the understanding like triggering and release we need to understand that with the alignments, right, all, all the celestial bodies, they are pulling up our issues, right? They're pulling up our issues. Our issues are negative energies within the body, mind, heart, and so on. Now what we can do is we can facilitate this release. Okay, we can facilitate this release by doing two things. Okay, one is meditation done right, especially for us in Codicat, right, we have a light meditation, a light meditation, and non-attachment meditation, especially. So for us, our light meditation and non-attachment meditations help to facilitate us to release negative energies from our, our, our self, our very being. Okay. Now, the other thing would be Qigong. And especially uh, our kind of chico, which is unity chico. So those of you who attended our class or experience a unity chico, a unity chico also helps us to release negative energies. So during such periods whereby the celestial bodies are uh, helping us release negative energies, we can even um, do activities like this to facilitate it. So um, other kinds of meditation can also help release, especially when you are doing it the right way. Remember, we must learn to let go or accept. Don't make the same decision and hold on to our negativity and get into like more anger and so on. All right, don't do that. And um, our unity qigong can do it. Whether other qigong will help, maybe. Um, if they cannot help us to release, the negativity so a lot of other qigong is about um, strengthening the qi right getting more energy but something that the qigong does right which also can help is related to the fourth thing 
All right, and the fourth thing I'm going to recommend is basically to help us deal with high energy. So we're going to get too much energy. So what do we do? We have to make sure that we have better grounding. So better grounding means better connection to the earth. Right, better connection to the earth. And with better connection to the earth, a lot of the extra energies, when we talk about excess energies coming from all the uh, all the planets and celestial bodies, it's going to send energies to us. We wouldn't have too much, and we, we get headache and uh, can't sleep and so on. So if we are more grounded, all right, then all these excess energies can all go down, and it won't affect us so much. So um, uh, unity qigong can help us with that, and normal qigong can help us with that. So other kinds of activities that can help us would be grounding activities. So for example, grounding activities would be like gardening. So gardening will help us to, right, to come into a lot of contact with the ground and build a relationship with earth. So it helps us ground. And uh, taking walks in the park in nature, right, nature and park. So other kind of activities is basically we don't want to be triggered so you know if we have more silent time for ourselves we may do more reading then we don't have uh, so much interaction with other people we can also avoid um, being triggered because when we are triggered then we will have um, we can easily get into disagreements with other people all right so what we can do is actually focus on all this during all these celestial alignments focus on letting go and accepting especially when it comes to our um, our mind and very importantly all right especially those of you who are on in our groups and whereby i will send out occasional reminders so what i to tell people is now when you know there's a celestial alignment ongoing for a certain period i think it would be good to realize that other people will be easily triggered and we ourselves will be easily triggered and we need to remind ourselves to stay stay calm stay cool more don't don't get triggered Okay, and if people are, are triggered, we can be understanding so that other people getting triggered, we, we, you know, we don't react when other people are triggered. Because a lot of times when people are triggered, they get angry, then we get angry in return, and then, you know, an eye for an eye and things get worse. And that's not really very nice for us, right, for everybody who's involved. Okay, with that, um, I hope everyone gets a more complete understanding of how the two bodies and the alignments affect us and what can be done. So with that, um, I would like to thank you everyone for joining us and hope to see you all again. Have a good day, good night and goodbye.